Hi, I'm Scientific Illustrator Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Traits Go Ahead and Sketch, a Bermuda Buttercup instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch the Bermuda Buttercup by applying what you learned with your step-by-step -step lesson. You can follow along with this lesson even if you don't have the lesson kit. Help this tiny business by shopping for lesson kits at naturesketchcreate.com, clicking that like button, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Go sketch a Bermuda buttercup or something similar at a park, garden, or even inside your home. Today, I'm sketching a Bermuda buttercup that I pulled from my backyard. Remember, this is meant to be relaxing and fun. Take your time, enjoy observing nature, and don't get too caught up with the accuracy. Let's get started. So first, you want to use a pencil to create a light, rough sketch of the plant using some basic shapes like circles and cones or you can actually trace the flower on your page. And you can do this without picking the flower. But I have the flower right here in front of me. And before you start drawing it, you'll want to think about how you want it arranged on your page. So we could have this a forward facing flower like that, or even to the side like that. And it's up to you. And you also want to decide how many of the buds you want to include and even maybe how many stems. For simplicity, we're just going to add one of these stems and one flower. And I'll probably add all of these buds. And you don't have to paint it or draw it exactly how you see it. You can take a bud or a flower from here. Say you want a forward facing flower here too. You can add that in. As you can see, some of these stems have more than one flower on them and that are actually open. So you can add that in there like that. Maybe um, add it in so you can see it forward facing in addition to the side view flower. And something you can do to keep it propped up is to put a little bit of your kneaded eraser here and then just kind of stick it on there so that it stays in place. And like I said, you have to determine where you want this placed on your page. Do you want it in the center? Do you want it on the side? Maybe I'll do it to the side a little bit. Do you want it the same size or do you want to make it bigger than real life? So it all depends on what you're looking for. And these are all things you want to determine before you start your sketch. So it takes a few minutes to figure out what exactly you want to draw and include and the size. So I'm going to include these. And my kneaded eraser is going to be a little bit in my way, but I can get a little bit of an idea of this by just kind of drawing some lines. And most of this I'm going to have to figure out on my own. And then can move these around so they're in a position that I like. Kind of like this. I'm going to draw a line up. And I'm just drawing an outline just to give me an idea of the size and placement. So it's gonna, probably going to be a little bit bigger than the flower itself. And, we'll, and I will have to change it, but it helps me when I'm actually drawing it. So I don't have to think about getting the right size when I'm drawing it. 
when it's not on the page. And again, you can do this by just lifting up your paper and putting it behind the plant if you're out sketching it in a yard or garden instead of inside your house. And this plant lasts a pretty good amount of time once it's picked. It doesn't start to wilt too soon. So you'll have some time if you pick it and want to do it inside. And I think I'm just going to include this one, this one, and this one. I'm not going to include this bud just for simplicity. And I might move these around in my image a little bit so they're not overlapping. But sometimes having some overlapping can look nice too and give you a little bit more of a 3D effect. Then I have a stem. Gives me, this gives me an idea of the size, but again, not exact. Just helps out. I'm also going to add some leaves. I'm just going to add two leaves. I picked them so that I can place them next to and closer to the blooms. And I'm going to move them around and figure out how I want them placed. I might do something similar to my step-by-step. -step. So I'll leave that there. I'll just go ahead and do the same thing and trace right over it. And then draw it in afterwards. And again, this isn't going to be the exact size. So you need to remember it's probably going to be a bit bigger than the actual plant when I trace around it. But it is easier than guessing the size. It goes a little faster. And it's a sketch, so I don't need to be exact. So I'm not too worried about that either. I'm just getting a representation of this plant. So I'm gonna move these to the side. And every time I move things, it's going to change it a little bit. So it's not going to look exactly the same. But this, again, this is a sketch, so I'm not too concerned with that. So I've moved my plant to the side, so I'm going to go ahead and start drawing in the details a little bit. So. Since I started with the forward facing flower, I think I'll do that again. And this is, gave me an approximate of the size, kind of that big. So I'm going to draw a light circle there for it. And then I'm going to start adding in some of these petal lines. And you could also start with the center. It's not actually in the center from my view. It's kind of off-centered. Some of these lines blend in really well together, so I can't really see where the petals start and end. I start with really light marks. And then I get darker as I Feel more confident that's the real line. Make the light marks and kind of look at them and see, look at this and then look back at my plant, look at this again and see if it's the right size. drawing this much smaller than our step-by-step, -step, so I may not get as much detail. And I'm not trying to be too exact, so just getting an idea of this plant. Just kind of quickly adding in some lines. And kind of going off this initial 
tracing that I did. Tracing kind of similar to our transfer image for our step-by-step. -step. The difference being that I'm going to have to add some more lines and define them. Whereas with the step-by-step, -step, I didn't really have to do that. They're already all there. Sometimes I twist my pencil so I can get a finer tip. So I use it a little bit, it starts to dull. basic shape here. I'm going to kind of stick with the size even though it's probably a little bit smaller than this. I can draw in lines a little bit smaller. So rather than working on the outside here, I'm going to work towards a little bit closer in since I know it'll be a little smaller. And I'm just quickly adding them. I'm not worrying again too much about the details getting the sizing exact. It's just a representation of this flower, just a quick study of it, getting to know it a little bit, enjoying some time in nature, as hopefully you are. At least I'm spending time observing and appreciating nature. And if you're doing it inside, at least you're getting that time with the plant. about the placement of these spots, just kind of adding them in in an approximate way. This is just a sketch, just an approximate representation of this plant, so I don't feel it's necessary to make sure they're in the exact right spot or spend too much time on it. It's just a quick study so I can enjoy and practice drawing this plant. Just some of the lines with slightly darker marks, like I did just here. Let me just define this flower a little bit more. Buttercup is sour grass. I'm going to go ahead and write that in here. But it's that same plant, so I'm going to write the same scientific name. I'm trying to write that in italics. Now I have saved my paints and I'll revive those with a little bit of water and I saved them from my step-by-step -step painting and I also have my other paints with me just in case I need a little bit more vibrancy from some fresh watercolor. Sometimes once they dry they get a little dull. 
also sometimes I can run out and occasionally there's something else I want to include that's different from before and I want to mix a new color. So I'm going to create this painting using the same or similar steps as the step-by-step. -step. So I'm going to revive this lightest, lightest color, maybe adding just a little bit more. Might have dulled or be, might be a little low in pigment at this point since we've already used it. And I'm going to check it out and it looks decent. I'm going to use that, dab it off onto my towel, and I'm just going to do what I did with the step-by-step -step and cover the entire plant with one layer of this paint. And anytime my paint starts to run out from my brush, I'll just pick up a little bit more and keep going. But otherwise, I'll be using this very similar to how I use a marker or a crayon, just kind of filling in the space with one layer. Just make sure you dab off your brush on your towel before you apply the paint to your painting to help control where that paint's going and to prevent the paper from buckling from too much water being applied to the painting itself. This color is wet and light because it's had more water added to it in the palette making it appear lighter when we use it on the paper. So it has less pigment in it and more water. So before putting on the next layer of paint, I'm going to dab it off to see if it's dry. I'm not going to rub my hand over it. If it's still wet, that would cause it to smear, unless that's an effect you're looking for. And this method, since we're not putting a lot of water actually onto the paper, it makes it dry faster, which you, makes it so you can paint it faster, get some more details in there faster, which is great for sketching. So I'm going to take a little bit of this green color. This is the one I used for my step-by-step. -step. Maybe this one was. I'll test both of them out. Dab it off on my towel and test it out on my paper. I think it needs a little more pigment, so I'm gonna take that, test it on my paper. I think that looks good. So I'm gonna pick a little bit more up, dab it off on my towel, so I have that water and paint control. And I'm going to go ahead and add it again in one single layer to my plant. This time I won't add it to the flower petals, just to the leaves and the stems and the calyxes. And you can kind of move paint around while it's still wet to fill in a space if you want to move it up to the edges and kind of move it towards the next space wet paint and kind of move it into the areas you want it to go to with your brush. And if you need a finer tip on your brush, just roll that tip before you apply it to your painting on your towel. Just kind of roll it to create more of a fine tip if it's too wide to get in those smaller spots. And this is a little bit smaller right now than our step-by-step -step painting, so it may be a little bit harder to stay in the lines but don't worry about that too much. If paint goes outside of the lines, you can redefine them later on with the ink, or just leave them outside and it'll just add kind of a fun look to your painting. This is a sketch. It makes it perfectly imperfect. Those little imperfections, maybe you think you made a mistake, they actually look really fun and add character to your painting dab this off just a little bit to lighten it see a little lighter and then I'm going to add a little bit in the center here right now clean off my brush and next I'm going to use the full concentrated buttercup yellow let's see if that retained its vibrancy here pretty good. So I'm going to just use that, pick up a little bit more, dab it off onto my towel, and then I'm going to add it to these flower petals. And I will want to keep some of this lighter color underneath for variation. So it helps make it so that it looks a little bit more 3D without using too many layers of paint and creating painting that takes too long. 
So as you can see, I left a little bit there. So I'm mostly I'm adding this into the darker areas or the shadowed areas of the plant. And if you can't tell the difference, just kind of move your paintbrush around a little bit sporadically and you'll be able to add it and just avoid a little bit here and there so that you can retain some of that lighter color. It's a very small space, so you might not be able to tell that I left some areas a little lighter. I clean off my brush. So next I'm going to add a little bit of a darker color green to my leaves and my calyxes and stems. And then I test that out here. Looks pretty good, maybe a little darker. It is kind of a lighter plant. The leaves don't get too dark. And some areas are a little are even lighter. So this leaf here, there's a lot of light shining in the center of these stems. And this one, since I have some direct light coming down onto it right now. And then the center of the leaves here, where the vein is, is also a little lighter, so I'll try to avoid those spots when I'm adding this new layer of color. So I'm painting the outside and then filling it in just because it gives me more control. You can just paint from one side to the other if you like. It's up to you. Pick up more paint whenever you need it. avoid painting in those lighter areas. But again, this is just a sketch, so if you do, it's okay. And I'm going to try to preserve some of that lighter area here on the stem as well. Again, not working too much on being exact, just kind of getting that paint in the same similar space, just a quick sketch representation of this plant. Clean off my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of this orange color to the side. Dab it off on my towel and check it out. I want it to be pretty light. I'm going to add a little bit more to some of these areas to deepen the shadow up a little bit to give a little bit more of a contrast, help it look a little more three-dimensional. Let's add a little shadow in there. And there is a little bit of this orange color on the tips of these buds as well, so I'm going to add that in there. And then there's some orange right here, so I'm going to have to check to see if that's dry. It's pretty dry. And pick up a little bit more of that darker orange color and you can test it on your paper first. And I wanted that to bleed a little bit so it wasn't completely dry. That's an effect I wanted. So I put it in there and then it kind of bleed out into the green a tiny bit. Check if that's dry. Looks pretty good. Add a little bit of that orange color there. If it's a little too dark, I don't like how dark that was. So I'm picking it up a little bit with my clean wet brush, lightening that spot up a little bit. So I clean my brush. And then I took that clean brush and just wiped it over and it picked up that paint off and then I can clean the brush off again. And then next I'm going to add some of this reddish color. And if you want, you can keep adding a little bit more dark areas to the green leaves to make them pop even more. But I'm not going to work on it too much. I'm just going to do this quick representation. So we're going to move on to adding the spots. I'm just going to go ahead and add those in where I drew them, not being too exact, just kind of dabbing them in, just real fun, easy activity, just getting those in there, and a little bit in the center here, 
Sometimes these little center parts are a little lighter and these leaves are pretty dark. I want that to bleed a little bit so it is wet. Let those bleed together a little. Again, was not exact about that placement, just kind of adding them in, kind of wherever. And then I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to add a little bit of this orange color to the center here, maybe a little lighter. This flower, it's pretty light, so I'm dabbing it off on my towel, pick a little more, maybe mix it to the side. Check it out again. Looks pretty good. Dabbed off on my towel and add it just to the center. Again, not being exact, just kind of adding it in there. And I think we'll add just a little bit of this lighter green color to these buds. And that was a little too wet, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of that after I dab it off on my towel. So I had too much water on my brush, which happens sometimes. And I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more of that green to the center of the flower too. Maybe a little more. Sometimes it takes a little trial and error. It's good to work with a lighter color first and then apply a darker color. It's a little harder to go backwards. into the flower because right now I'm observing has a little bit of that green on this area here. Not a lot, but very, very subtle. And I like how this looks, so I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and then I'll add some ink lines. So once this is dry, you can test that again by just kind of dabbing your finger over it. You can go ahead and start adding some ink lines. I have the black 005 micron. I like to start with the smallest tip micron so I can redefine some of these lines. If I don't like it, I can go back over it and change it with this thicker micron. I'm going to redraw the common name and scientific name. You can also maybe write over any of your observations that you wrote in earlier. I don't really just leave those in pencil. I could have also made this more of a stylized text if you want. I'm just gonna leave it kind of boring. And then go ahead and redraw your image. And this is a lot like step seven. Just kind of redrawing those lines based on where your paint landed. So if you want to draw some of those lines a little bit uh, outside of the paint or inside the paint. So maybe here I drew my line out here, but I want it to be right here on the edge of the paint. I can do that. This is just a quick study of this plant. So it doesn't need to be exact. So you can just redefine those a bit. And again, any observations or notes you have, anything you would like to remember, or any questions you have about the plant, you can write those on the side. This is your journal, this is your sketch, your study of this plant. And that experience will be individual to you, so what you decide to add to it, whatever you're feeling in the moment, or thinking. And every time I paint, my painting turns out a little bit different depending on my mood, or the weather, what's going on around me. That's also something you can note on the side. really see a lot of these petal lines, so I'm not going to draw all of them in. I 
I might add some more green here. You can add more paint or ink lines at any time once this is dry. This stem ended up being really wide, so I'm going to draw on the inside of it to make it a little bit thinner. Next, I'm going to add just some slightly thicker lines with the black 01 micron, it's just a little bit thicker. So maybe here on the stem. dip name a little thicker. Last thing I'm going to use the 08 black micron to add some thicker lines throughout. This one does tend to smudge. It doesn't dry quite as fast because it had leaving a little bit more ink on the paper. So do be careful. Let that dry before you run your hand over it. I'm going to use this really sparingly just to add a little bit more hard lines and it makes it so that it pops off the page a little bit more. So kind of adding it into the darker shadowed areas will help create that kind of effect. Line variation is very important create a more three-dimensional from a flat image. So I'm going to have this pop off a little bit more by outlining it and not touching these back leaves here. And then I varied the line that I put into this stem. And this is kind of a more shadowed area, so I'm going to have a little bit there in here just to give it a little bit more of that contrast and this is all very delicate so I'm not going to touch that. Let me just add a little bit here and there. This forward facing bud here, the one that's most closest to me, I'm going to add a little bit there too just to give it that feeling that's a little closer. You can see it, the lines are a little bit more crisp. There's the thinner lines a little bit harder to see, so it gives it that effect that looks like it's a little bit further away, making it seem more three-dimensional. I like all these ink lines, but I'm going to add a little bit more paint. So I think there's just a little bit darker in the center of this flower to make it look like it's deeper and further away. So I don't feel like this is mimicking that depth very well the way it is right now. It looks The color looks good, so I'm just going to add just a little bit around the edge here. And it seems like it's a little darker from my view right here. And I think that's mimicking that a little bit more now. So I like that. And you can feel free to add observations and continue to add observations as much as you'd like when you fill in this white space around your drawing. You can go back and add more flowers or maybe you wanna do like a cross section so cut the flower and look inside and draw that enlarged here. That's always fun. Um, talk about your mood, the weather, 
whatever it is that you are thinking about. And feel free to go ahead and add more ink and paint as long as you'd like. And great job observing your world and keep practicing.